Although I do oh. cherish my picture of him with a styrofoam cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So I, I, I stopped today for some coffee, and I was very, I was like, ooh, this is good. Cause this, this is all, good. This is all, this is all, this is safe. Only the lid. Yeah, the, uh, no, that is Wawa. I heard they make good coffee. Uh, this is my first, my first time. Although I got to tell you that I get, I go to Island Roasters for my cup of coffee. Yeah, they're and good. And the problem is, usually it's burning my hand right now. Yeah. <laughs> Done by then, I'll just turn it over to you. Uh, right. I'm with it. 513 tops. This yeah. thing should be quick. All right. Yes, sir. Where did Kyle go? Yeah. 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 How you doing, Carrie? Hey, how are you? I think everybody's in a fog. Yeah. Everybody, I, I'm like trying to get my head straight again, you know, <laughs> picking up all the pieces that I ignored over the last three days. Uh, hey, Kelly. Someone is asking me for a username and a password, which it's never done. I don't know that I... Special meeting of the City Commission for Tuesday, May 28th may come to order. Please silence your cell phones and turn on your microphones. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Mayor Owen? Here. Vice Mayor Hartman? Here. Commissioner Colodi? Here. Commissioner McGurk? Here. Commissioner Sachs? Here. Thank you. All right, first item up is actually public participation, Brian. I know you're anxious to give your presentation. Any members of the public wish to speak? Seeing none. Now, Brian. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. This is part two of our transportation workshop. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight. Uh, we have a lot of staff members here to hopefully address any questions. This is intended to be interactive, so please stop me anytime with a question or, an, or a discussion item. Um, our theme tonight is, despite the failure of the half cent sales tax, is to move projects forward. And I've, I've heard, and you have know, been here almost six months now, a strong desire from the commission and the community to move things forward of what we can do. Um, and I think you'll see tonight is move what we can forward now while also have that long-term perspective. Um, you know, we really need to maximize all available funding sources. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, using all resources available as efficiently as possible. Um, so we have, you'll hear some other folks tonight from me. We have Nancy Maddox going to talk about trails. Um, also here, uh, Jesse Myers here from engineering, Amy King from planning, Faith from maintenance operations going to talk about resurfacing. Uh, I don't know if Tony's here as well, Tony, and Michelle is here also, capital projects. So any question you have, we're here to ready to address it. Um, I'm going to speak to the, the PowerPoint here. When we get to the maps, um, I did send you the PDFs if you really want to zoom in on something. Um, the next slide is one we've shown for, for months now. Um, the one thing that's missing here, this is our master plan kind of concept with all those other sources of projects. Uh, we had shown the half cent sales tax at the bottom um, to really help us catch up on things, but that's gone. Um, but the plan has not changed. Is We heard from the commission, you want a plan that we can, we can follow. Um, regardless of funding sources, a, a roadmap for, for the future of transportation in New Smyrna Beach. So this slide has not changed. Um, so moving on, um, we have three maps tonight that represent kind of where we're at in our plan. It's a roadway and inter intersection map, a sidewalk map, and a trails master plan. 
Um, I'm going to start with the roadway map, which is on here. Now, I know it's going to be hard to see on that screen. Um, in a break, you can go look, look at the board over here. You can pull it up on your screen. But really, <laughs> looking at the map isn't the most important part tonight, is we're going to cover where we're at in our, our roadway and intersection process. So I've heard a lot about the term local roadway plan. And there's, there's, this lays out you know, roadways and intersection improvements that will improve, improve capacity, access, mobility, and safety for the local roadway users. Um, it, it provides and or improves options on the local roadway network. So for roadway connections, two things we've heard of, one we can move forward on right now is the east-west connector. And that is, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, this, this yellow section on the south side of 44, um, we have a consultant scope of work to do a feasibility review of potential east-west options. This is kind of south side of 44 going um, really from all the way from Mission, even a little bit further east, going west all the way to Sugar Mill, of looking at at least three realistic options that we can move forward with on a plan and could be phased in over many years, but providing an east-west connection option along that part of town. Um, so again, we have a consultant scope of work for that project. Um, the intent would be to bring that back with uh, an authorization to proceed at the June 11th City Commission meeting. Um, any, any questions on that particular project before I move along? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, this is the road that we've been advocating yes. to take us, and you say from Mission to Sugar Mill. I just wanted to make sure that put on the record that we're talking about from Mission Road where 10th Street is, yes, roughly, if possible, to then tie into what either Sh Sugar Mill would be great or that Florida Hospital, yes, um, that little road, depending on how that may be developed in the future. But I just want to make sure that that's the road we were talking that about. That is a project. Uh, I know I've, sp I've spoken to you about it. I, spoke, I met with Commissioner Hartman and got his <laughs> thoughts on that. Um, I actually extended it out west to include Glencoe and Sugar Mill as kind of part of a master plan as lo looking for something that's going to connect to those, those key segments of where the future traffic is going to be. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brian. Okay. Um, Commissioner, if you recall, we have, you have asked us to go from Mission to uh, Corbin Park, but we want to um, kind of like look at the other options, making sure that we look at Corbin Park possibly Glencoe and possibly the where the hospital is. Well, yeah, I didn't, I wanted to go further west than Corbin Park if possible. Cor just picking up Corbin Park was important so that neighborhood can move east and west. Thank you. Okay. And that project would likely be an impact fee project. Um, this is a very good candidate for impact fees. It's a capacity improvement. It's exactly what impact fees are designed for. We'll talk a little bit more about impact fees later. Um, the second project that we heard about a lot is when, um, when Commissioner Colodi mentioned early on in the process was a improvement project for um, what would be considered the Pioneer Enterprise Halleck Wayne, kind of that series of rights and lefts kind of get um, off of 44, but a way to go east and west. And that was not included. Let me back up a little. Those are county roads, all of them. Those were not included on the county's half cent list. The half cent's gone away, but the need for the project has not gone away. So um, we show that in here. It's on green on the map is what that segment is. But um, that would be kind of the north side of 44. And, and as I understand, it would be improvements, whether it's safety, capacity, intersection, traffic flow. Um, just a lot of folks are using some combination of those streets to get around and to make it as efficient as possible. So no particular project is proposed at this time with that, but the next step would be to look at you know, feasibility or preliminary engineering. It's on the county roadway system, which complicates things. So you know, we, we could move forward now to the county and say we want to do this and try and get their support would be a first step. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, my understanding from one of the meetings with the county that they actually did the study and they have the information on the improvements. It goes back a number of years but they did do it, and apparently uh, the city decided they didn't want them to do it at the time. So We can find really that, dust it that off, and, and see where we're at. Back. Especially yeah. being that the uh, intersection at Rue 1 is being looked at mm -hmm. uh, by the state. Okay. So, uh, 
Mr. Fields, uh, just briefly, uh, Washington will be considered tonight? Yes. Um, that's the next part of the discussion is really the segments that are in red on the map, which are, I would call them city roadway improvements, the red dashed lines. These include alignment, intersection safety, sidewalks, drainage, underground utilities, traffic calming. Starts with Washington Street, a number of issues there, including the intersections of um, Faulkner and Orange, um, just some some tricky situations with some four-way stops. We've had some crashes. Um, continuing on the red streets with Magnolia Street, Downing, Douglas, North, and North Riverside were the candidates. And these were carried forward from our half-cent list. Again, the, the, that funding source went away, but the needs have not. Um, so those are you know, roadway improvement projects, including safety and all those items that I mentioned. Would be, this would be kind of our backlog of projects that we're waiting to fund. Moving on from that, um, go to the blue dots, is what I would call them on the map. Those are intersection improvements, working with DOT. These are all on state roads. Um, that the, if they're on a state road and it's a city intersection, you can use impact fees to fund those improvements. You can also submit to, through the TPO to, to get DOT funding on those projects. There's a number of options there we'll talk a little bit more about later. But those intersections are, are 44 at Mission, 44 at Myrtle, and then US-1 at Canal, which is currently under construction, US-1 at Washington, US-1 at Wayne, and US-1 at Turnbull Bay. And, and then the last one we added was Flagler Avenue at Peninsula. So if there's particular priority items there, um, we could move those around um, and uh, see which ones can be funded and what, what needs to be done. In addition to that, continuing with intersection, we have two signalization improvements that have been proposed recently. I want to make sure we cover exactly where we're at on both of them. The, the strong desire for emergency signals at each of our two fire stations. So there's, there's two different approaches the city commission can take. You could decide to move forward right now and fund those with, because of signalization, you could use impact fees and you can move them forward right now with design and the construction. Or you could wait and, and see those projects through to possibly have them funded by other sources. Um, let me just tell you where they're at on both of those other, other funding sources. So fire station number 52, Amy did a great job with the TPO of getting that high up on our prioritization list. Um, this currently has a number six ranking. I would say it's very likely that that would get funded if not next year and the year after that. So given that as a signal, my starting point would be $300,000, could be as much as half a million depending on the design. I think I would recommend we wait and see that through the TPO process since it's I mean, that high on the list. Um, the other one at, at, at fire station number 50 is being evaluated with the DOT corridor study. That may be a little further along in the process as far as to get that funded moving forward right away. So. That is one that you could accelerate, but um, it might take some time if you wanted to wait for it. So any questions on those two signals or the intersection improvements? Uh, the intersection improvement at Peninsula. Wasn't aware that the DLT was studying that? Uh, no, I'm sorry, they are not studying that. That is ours that we added. That's okay, but we got a blue dot on it. Um, Blue is just for intersection improvement. Most of them are DOT. My apologies. That's the one that is not. Okay. So. That's fine. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, We're, Brian, real quick. The, I think the, the, the number one intersection improvement, <clears throat> and I think it's on here, is going to be 44 on Mission Wallace Road. It, that's on the Agreed. switch, correct? That's, I would recommend that as our highest priority push forward with DOT. Okay. That's Thank absolutely. you. And, and when you when you say improvements on that, what what are some examples? Like what what are we going to? I know signalization is a big one. Um, I, I think Commissioner McGurk, you're referring to the 44 at Mission and Wallace, yes. um, kind of the bottleneck there. Yeah. The level of service is just very poor. I don't know if it's an F, but um, I, this is something Heather Garcia spoke about when she was here at the last workshop. There's a series of improvements, turn lanes, acts just to increase the capacity at that intersection. Um, that's a project I highly recommend we push forward as much as we can. Yeah, and I can give the mayor some background. There was um, I was just going to say I, I I I get the the need. I guess what I've what I've wondered before is I think that just the basic timing of the lights 
I mean, if you just sit there, I'd sit in a Burger King parking lot one day and sit there and time the lights manually on my cell phone. And the east-west traffic goes for about a minute and the, all the other traffic is in the intersection for about a minute and a half. So we've, over, we've over-prioritized the side roads versus the main roads. I'm not a traffic engineer. I don't know exactly why you might do that, but it seems like if we just shifted that a little bit, that's something we could Brian, do quicker. Brian, if let me speak to that. So we, one of the things I'll mention at the commission meeting tonight was that the last TPO meeting last week, we actually secured the funding finally for smart lights. Yes. That's going to go from that's going to go from I-95 all the way to Third Avenue. Um, that does exactly what you're describing. In other words, we have more of an analog system right now, yeah. and we're going to go to a digital um, smart light capacity, and it's going to have the ability to determine if something messes up the system, what cars have been there longer, where the backups are, and it can actually adjust the flow and the, and, and, and the lights of the traffic to be able to compensate for that. So what kind of a time frame, I mean, because I guess, I guess what my, my, my simple mind is, I get we have an analog system now, but I feel like we can make some easy adjustments now if we just made a few phone calls and figured out who the right people to talk to were while we're waiting, because that project, I mean, that's amazing. That's mm -hmm. what I've been pushing for. I'm glad that you were able to have influence and, and help that be done for the city, but that's going to take time. I mean, that won't be done for this holiday season, this busy summer season, right? That's correct. So is there anything we can do in the, in the immediate? Is there yes, we can do exactly what you said. I've also observed the timing seems it's just unusual, depending yeah. on, they, they most likely have certain timing patterns based on expected demand, but I don't think it quite matches up with, very well with that and it creates the situations you spoke about so yes we can contact the county work with the dot have them study it make a change in the timing sometimes that can be done immediately on that day if they see something wrong they can add a few more seconds green here red red for this movement um to adjust it it's like kind of fine-tuning the dial to make it yeah. work a little bit better that can be done very easily and, and mayor i could tell you that uh, they have worked on that traffic light in terms of changing the, the timing on it um, several times. The, the problem from the study that they've done, it looks like it's a capacity and movement issue. So they have to add some, some few lanes there. They have to change the traffic pattern. And then they have to put a traffic light down by the fire station right there with a business uh, 44. But they have, and I know Nancy's husband he works for the county, you know, he's a, one of the traffic engineers in terms of signal, and they've tried everything. Um, you know, some people, they complain if it's the east-west have more uh, green lights, and when they do that, then the east-west complain about the same thing. So, and they have adjusted it, I could tell you, for the past three years, yeah. several times. Well, the east-west is backing up to Home Depot. I haven't seen Mission Road backed up past the entrance to Kmart there. So, I, I mean, the east-west is clearly the, we should be prioritizing the east-west traffic. and, and so. I hear you. I think other changes, longer term, better signalization, different designs to the intersection will obviously solve the problem long term. I'm just saying I think there's things we could do in the very, very short term that would cost practically nothing that might could help ease some, ease some flow. Quick question, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, sorry, excuse me. For uh, anyone, for Commissioner McGurk or Brian, <clears throat> do you have a, apologize for my voice. <clears throat> Do you foresee uh, in a crystal ball any time that FDOT would consider making the solid hard improvements to the roadway that might improve other than signalization and, and the digital age? Or, you know, or will it be in our lifetime? Uh, this question regarding the scope of the improvements that DOT would implement? Yes. Yes, the Mission 44 includes turn lanes and capacity improvements, not just the signal. Yes to move more cars through that intersection. Were they willing at any time to give us a projection? I don't know. We, they have not given us that, but if we, we intend to push that forward and come back with the schedule, work through the TPO. Um, that's something we would have to nominate and get it on the list and move it up. And for Commissioner and yourself, do you see a significant improvement in the change of signalization to that intersection? in the interim it can yes certainly hopefully if, if it's mistimed 
um, I've seen significant intersection improvements um, just from timing adjustments. Good to hear. Thanks. Um, so we've, we've covered the roadways, the intersections, the signals. Um, what's not shown on this map are developer-funded improvements, and there are a number of those that are planned. Um, don't quite have the schedule on that because it's tied to development, but just a couple of them that are coming up. The widening of Sugar Mill from 44 going no, just within the coastal woods commercial multifamily area. That's tied to the commercial multifamily projects, so that will move forward with, that, with those. Um, we have improvements on Glencoe coming. We have improvements on Corbin Park with various projects. So there are developer-funded improvements that are coming. Didn't show those on the, on the map here, to kind of clutter it up, but there are some of those as well. Um, so moving on to the next map um, is just sidewalks. And um, this is pretty simple. This is blue are streets with existing sidewalks. Um, red are proposed sidewalk segments. And um, sidewalks are required with all new development on both sides of the street with a few exceptions. Um, older neighborhoods didn't have sidewalks or road improvements and old standards didn't have them. So we have to go look at where are there gaps needed, where can we fill in those gaps. So what's proposed, and there's a list here, just it's Art Center Avenue, South Street, Cooper Street, Ocean Avenue, Pine Street, 2nd Avenue, Dimmick Street, Julia, Inwood, Milford Place, 7th Street, and South Glencoe Road. That was somewhat of a carryover from our half-cent sales tax list. Some of the sidewalks are already there, um, but those were identified as needs. Those needs carry forward, and we would have to look for funding sources for sidewalks. So Back to the Glencoe Road, part of that will be taken care of by the developer, yes. right? The front part, closest yeah. to 44, would be handled so by we'll the developer. So we'll just do from the apartments to the apartment complex? Correct. Okay. And, and how, how are these typically, what are some ways that we might prioritize these? Knowing that we have to pick one, that you're not going to be able to do them all in the same year, so you're going to have to have one that goes before another. How, what data, how do you, how do you pick the the top priority for sidewalks? Um, look at things like pedestrian volume, safety, particular need for people, especially like school children going to bus stops and things where there's just a high priority, high volume, um, intersection crossing where there's a premium on safety and pedestrian mobility. So basically needs of the community, mayors. Okay. And you said for all new, if we're putting in a new road, so like Colony Park, I think is the, new, the first new road in a long time, we will require sidewalks on both sides. Yes. Okay. So the next map is trails. I'm going to turn this over to Nancy here in just a second. But we have two types of what we call trails. Um, we have multi-use trails, which are shown in, in uh, fuchsia color. Um, these are trails that are 10 feet and wider. They're called multi-use paths. Um, the solid line is existing. The dashed is proposed. And then we have another category, which we call bike paths, um, which are in the six to 10 foot range generally. Um, those are shown in green um, with existing, it being the solid lines, dashed being the proposed lines. I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy. She's gonna talk about some of those projects we have coming up. I have to bring it down a little. <laughs> so, um, the only two projects we have as far as Sun Trail, and Sun Trail is state funding. It's not city funding, it's not county funding, it is state funding. The River to the Sea Regional Trail was ranked number two three years ago um, in the trail funding with the FDOT. Um, so that is fully funded for the whole entire region, and we are part of that. And the part that they're doing construction documents right now is from 10th Street to 44. Um, they're about 60% complete. And then they will um, build it in 2021 is the target date. And then the other study that we've been working with DOT for the past year is the PD&E study. So is, is that the... the the hashed pink line running from the green on 10th Street? Correct. Okay. Um, with the green in between, um, because it is in construction. Okay. Um, documents are being done now. Um, that also connects with the Edgewater Trail mm -hmm. um, from Daytona State College. 
Um, the and other one. Where, where about does that, it's hard to tell in this, where does that come out on 44, roughly? Um, right there at Myrtle. Okay. Goes all along. So the exist, there is a small existing six foot. Yeah, on Myrtle, yeah. Yeah, so it's gonna be similar to that. Um, but we're also getting a lot of improvements um, <coughs> along the way on the east side of Myrtle Avenue. Um, the Sylvestri property is giving us an easement um, of 25 feet giving, so that we can build the trail there. Um, the other is the study on, on the PD and E study um, from uh, State Road 44 all the way to South Daytona. Um, they're going to be presenting to you in August. We all know that um, we're not happy with that route. <laughs> Um, and that we'll be going to request for a new pd and &E to go west, which is why we have the proposed dots going to our trail and going on Williamson north and through our sports complex all the way down South Street to, U to US 1. So those are the two that we have now. Um, of course, you'll see in the pink um, along 44, that's part of the um, PUD that the developers will be doing. So that'll become one day trail on the, on the east side of 95. And then there is a um, TPO study from going underneath 95 right now. Any other questions? Sorry, um, I'm still a bit confused. Are we talking about two separate trail systems? The one that runs, that was hoped to run from our city northbound on Dixie up to Ridgewood and mm -hmm. so on, is that a separate trail system from the one that's proposed to go east towards Atlantic. East towards Atlantic. Yes, you, there's a segment that says proposed bike path. That's something totally different? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's really two multi-use trail projects. The DOT does not consider it part as the Sun Trail. So there we have to do it separately. Those would be separate funds. We can't get Sun Trail funds for that. We'd have to go for TPO funds or something like, or if the legislature ever funds again um, trails yes. um, from greenways and trails, then that's something we could go for. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> Nancy, I know there's been discussion about a trail that was supposed to come straight down here, Julia, and we were to remove the parking spaces. That's not an option right now. Perfect. I want to make absolute, I want to put on the record yeah. Yeah. that at least I do not think that that should be done and, and make sure that, and I, as I understood that, that we moved away from that, we did. but I wanted to make sure that we're doing that. Okay. Thank you. Well, just a brief update on bridges. We have two bridge projects. No action is needed. These are both in the design phase right now. Um, both are funded by DOT with a 25% local match, uh, the Barracuda Bridge and the Fifth Street Bridge. Um, um, Barracuda Bridge is, goes through design and right away construction would be in 2022 by the, the current schedule. Um, likewise, the Fifth Street Bridge also under design. Um, the bridge span was recently expanded from 40 to 160 feet. Um, design and permitting scheduled to be complete in 2020 with construction in 2021. Both of those would have upcoming public meetings to go over final design, um, but they are moving along. No action needed by the commission on either of those bridges. I had a question real quick on that one. Uh, I know at one point we were kicking around on that expansion, uh, the extension rather, and whether or not FDOT was, would, would kick in the 75% of that extra. Did we get a resolution on that or we just? Yeah, uh, Kyla's waiting on DOT to do their analysis and then they'll come back to us and say uh, if they pay the 80% or not or the 75%. Okay. 
because my understanding is that that ultimate decision of the extension was still hinging on that and that because it significantly changes the the calculus of the cost for us i believe so uh, jesse do we know have we heard back from dot Okay. So just we want to put a note there, Brian, on that 160, because that's significant. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. On the Barracuda Bridge, uh, originally the scope of the uh, project did not extend to Quayasissi, nor did it extend to uh, the North Causeway. Uh, it would be a shame to put this bridge in without having the proper approaches and the intersections work. Has there been any discussions or contemplation of those projects being extended to those intersections with or without uh, DOT assistance? Not that I know of. Right now, uh, the, the actual bridge, it does not include the extension to the north to Quaya Sissi or to the south to the North Causeway. The discussion that we had, I think, when you brought the project is that if this is to happen, would be has to be funded through the general fund because we don't have any other funds to do that. Um, that's something we have to discuss. We have to come back to you. Since now the half cent sales tax is not on the table, we have to come up with a funding plan uh, to see. We have to come back to you and say this is the priority list, and then you guys have to approve that or not. So right now the bridge for DOT does not include both ends. But we discussed. Yes. Add we, your, your suggested to add him, and I agree with you. I think they need to be added. But no funding source at this point. It makes no sense to have a nice new bridge that costs many millions of dollars, dump out at an intersection that right now is uh, somewhat hazardous because it's all misaligned right in front of the Marine Discovery Center. And at 44, as we've discussed, there's pedestrian issues, uh, parking issues, any number of issues. And those short extensions would be well worth it in my mind, even if we had to fund it ourselves. It's just like having a nice a bridge to nowhere in Alaska, as they had, where they put all this money in and really didn't accomplish too much. And we agree with you, Commissioner. Brian, just as a point of reference, I'm not going to hold you to this number, but what is a, a quarter of a mile of, of like something like that where the, the road is already there so there's no right of ways and we're not, not doing all that but just resurfacing and improving streets give us a ballpark just resurfacing well i mean the kind of the, the type project he's talking about here where it's not just resurfacing but redesigning a bit and improving um, if you're not rebuilding it and you're resurfacing it you're looking at um maybe several hundred thousand dollars or a quarter of a mile um Depends on, on pricing and what you're doing, but um, I could give you a mad example of, of to, Washington. Yeah. If you do the reconstruction, which means you're doing your drainage, sidewalks, resurfacing, curbing, and so forth, that right there, probably talking about two to two and a half million a mile. The one that Mr. Colodi is talking about, it's a little bit different. I think he's looking for enhancement in terms of the resurfacing and doing some landscaping, probably some minor drainage. So I would say probably would be in the uh, in the million seventy fifth, seven fifty to a million a mile. And at this point, Minimum. it's it's far less than a quarter so, of a mile. So you might only have six hundred feet altogether. Yeah. So you'd be looking at in the two hundred, three hundred, somewhere in that range. It's really hard to. Yeah. No, I, pricing I isn't. You're under a half million. That's yeah. under a half million, enough. but not by much. It's a Thank lot. You. Roadway road improvements are so expensive right now. That's what's so challenging with obviously funding sources being limited. Um, okay, uh, moving along to. Hang on, sorry. We got two more. Sorry. I heard Vice Mayor first, okay. and he hasn't spoken yet. So when we talk about design and permitting complete in, in June of 2020, and you know construction to start in 2022, like under the Barracuda. Is that a fiscal year or is that the actual calendar year? That's, that's the calendar year. I have detailed schedules for okay. both projects. It's, I think one's, one's July 2022, the well, other one's late 2021. Okay, so we get, when we get closer, we'll have a, a month associated with that? Or yes. A, okay, thank you. You know, that fiscal year, DOT, is, is July 1st. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, these aren't weren't based on that. Um, it was just an estimate, and hopefully they won't get pushed out too far. Commissioner Sachs. Yes, thank you. Uh, Fifth Street Bridge, the extension from 40 to 160 feet, was that to address hydrology issues there? Uh, because I know the residents were very concerned about the um, flow. the slack water flow. Yeah. Um, I'm just reading my notes. It uh, el eliminates the need for retaining walls and the abutments, reducing the overall footprint of the bridge. Long-term maintenance cost decreases, decreases scour at the bridge abutments due to reduction in tidal velocities, increases the water flow within the channel for protected aquatic species, resulting in improved water quality, decreased siltation within the channel, and allows for provision of a five-foot sidewalk. So it might be money well spent to consider that. I mean, those are pretty standard improvements to things to have if you're, you know, if you have the ability to do so. Okay. Thanks. Uh, if I might add, one of the things it does not include is removing sediment Correct. and fill and material Correct. behind the homes just adjacent to the bridge itself. Okay. okay. Nothing else on bridges. Um, transitioning next topic, pedestrian safety improvements. Um, so a number of these have already been done, but looking forward to what more we can do. Um, what the picture shows here is a good example of our enhanced crosswalk um, lighted warning signs. So um, there, there's a sign, there's a push button, pedestrian comes along, pushes that sign, lights up. Um, drivers are supposed to stop for the pedestrian, but just gives another enhanced visibility um, for, for the crosswalk. Um, those have been implemented in a number of places on Atlantic Avenue. A number of additional locations have been proposed. Um, those are on Saxon at 9th, 12th, 15th, 18th, and 21st at the crossings, um, as well as one more on Atlantic at uh, 4155 South Atlantic, which is uh, opposite of the Seacoast Condominium. I've, I've looked at all of these. I, would, I think they are good candidates. We need to study them. I would be um, hesitant to install the crosswalk if there isn't a receiving pedestrian facility on the opposite side, um, to, such as a sidewalk path or at least a, a road with a bike lane or something. Otherwise, as pedestrians are just going to, some, in some cases, um, you know, grass or unpaved areas. And, um, but all good locations that we would look at. What's recommended, um, these are about 7,500 each, is that we budget in our next fiscal year. The target was 45,000 which would get up, up to six locations uh, that we would study and we could bring back. Um, we could do more um, if, if the money's there. There were two other locations that had been recalled in on Airport Road. Those are at Luna Bella and I think it's Casello. Is how you say that? I didn't read my notes. Um, those are two additional locations we could look at. So these are really good um, pedestrian enhancements for existing unsignalized intersections. When you say 7,500 each, that's the whole intersection. That's not per signpost, right? That's for two signs, that's for yeah, two the whole signs. intersection. Yeah. Okay. I thought we'd also talked about Canal and Myrtle. Uh, we can add that to the list. For the I may have missed that. I think, Good yes. point. Please yeah. do. That's yeah. important. And then I, sh I should add all those other street improvements that we, we listed previously. We would look at these as part of yeah. kind of the, the menu of options there but we could move forward on particular locations at any time. Brian, excuse me, is the uh, Myrtle and uh, Canal, is that a county jurisdiction as well? That's our um, partner, or is it FDOT? Uh, is that, I think that's ours. Yes, Canal just and ours. Myrtle? Just ours. ours. I'm hearing DOT from the crowd. Uh, we'll have to clarify, <laughs> I'll look at our map here. So I'm yeah. still new, so. Um, if it's not ours, and we, and we can look to work with our partners to implement that at DOT or the county. Yeah, they already have the, exi the standard crossing signs now. So there's the warning sign prior to the crossing sign and the crossing sign. I just think the enhanced lighted sign would improve for the children to be able sure. to push a button and actually have a flashing light. Because as is now with, mm -hmm. with traffic and some, some of the commercial traffic that goes up and down that road, it's just, you know, it's hit and miss whether they make it or not. And, and just to add to that, the, it really, these have been implemented on county and DOT roads. So um, in some cases, they've, we've jointly funded them on Atlantic. It was a 50-50. Um, I know we've done that also with the county 
on other improvements. So being outside of our jurisdiction doesn't prohibit it from being improved. What makes it interesting, Commissioner uh, Hartman, is that we maintain that section of canal, mm -hmm. but DOT actually owns the right of way. So it makes it a little bit interesting. Okay. Um, next topic, transitioning. We've heard a lot on resurfacing, uh, most recently in the budget discussion. Um, Faith is here. I'm going to talk about resurfacing. This is also on your agenda for tonight, in fact, to approve this year's resurfacing program. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Faith. Good evening, Mayor Commission. Um, I don't, did you get copies of the, any color, big colored copies of roadway improvements proposed for the next six years? It's, it's hard to read it on the on the wall, so um, okay, sorry. Are you talking about this? Um, first, just to go, the first map that shows the whole city, that shows our city maintained roads. We have 100 and, approximately 132 miles of paved city maintained roads, 9.61 unpaved, and 3.76 miles of alleyways. Um, which of course doesn't include the state or any county maintained roads. And just as a reference for what we've spent on resurfacing over the past few years, in fiscal year 14-15, we spent 134,000. Fiscal year 15-16, we spent 200,000, and that was for two roads. 16-17, um, we spent 145,000 plus 35,000 for a study through um, IMS, which is a pavement analysis study I was going to go into a little bit. Um, this year's budget, and in 17-18, we didn't, we didn't do any resurfacing due to the uh, impact of the hurricanes and um, waiting for, re, you know, reimbursement from FEMA. This year, we have 250000 budgeted for resurfacing, and that, like Brian said, is on your agenda later for approval. Um, we have requested 500000 for this next budget year when you get into your budget discussions. So prior to 2017, the city conducted what we would consider windshield surveys of, of roadway conditions and also included, you know, took into consideration requests from residents and, you know, put together a list as we could, best we could then. After that, um, in the spring of 2017, the county solicited bids for consulting services to use professional pavement management software. Um, a couple of the other cities, I think Port Orange, Edgewater, and some other cities here, we all went in together on a, um, you know, piggybacking on the bid for that, and we hired IMS to do a multi-year pavement management system for us. And um, I believe you were all have a copy of that at one point. It's a big report. Um, so they came in and they used this laser technology, a laser road surface tester vehicle. And it goes through, it drives all of the roads within the city at like speed limits, 25 to five miles per hour if necessary. The vehicle has six to seven cameras and laser technology to do laser, visual, and video techniques to determine the condition of the roadways. So they look at several things and they come up with a score for each type of uh, condition on the road. Surface distress, roughness, rutting, alligator cracking, edge cracking, patching, and potholes. And then they take all those scores and they come up with what considered a pavement condition index, a PCI. Um, that indicates the overall pavement condition. And that's pretty much the easiest um, category to recognize in this huge spreadsheet that has all these numbers that will tell you the condition of the road and when it should be resurfaced. <laughs> um, a minimum PCI of 60 means that overall the network falls at the lower end of the range where lightweight surface treatments and thin overlays are the standard rehab practice. Our average pavement condition is above the target zone of 60 to 65 with an average score of 70. And the number of streets rated as excellent when they did this report is above the minimum target level of 13% and we're at 25%. But 
just to understand that also. Given an average score of 70, though, providing funding at a $500,000 level, it will take six years to re resurface all the streets with a PCI of scores between 11 and 48. And this large sheet with all the colors is taking um, the roadways with their PCI score is on your left here of the screen, or of this page. And this is just rating them based on the pavement condition index. And it's showing you how many roadways would be able to be resurfaced with a, fun a funding level of 500,000. And what David did here, because he's more the expert on the, doing the software, is he put in 400,000 for resurfacing and then 100,000 for restriping is how we are looking at the 500,000. So this is, would take you six years to go through all these streets that are identified on here. And it would take you up to the roads that were identified at a 48 pavement condition index. Um, the IMS study actually uh, recommended a funding level of 1.3 million per year to bring your roadways up to um, the level that they recommend. Um, the fix all budget identified by this study is 20.3 million over five years. Um, like I said, the current list of streets to be resurfaced is in tonight's regular meeting agenda, and it includes for 250,000 or close to that, it includes 12 street segments, and it's a total of 1.537 miles. That's how much, how expensive it is to resurface roads. Um, the list was compiled using the IMS study, but engineering also adjusted the list a bit and they took out some of the alleyways and they put in a couple other streets to um, economize the price to do streets within the same area, you know, to not have one street here and another one beachside and try to group them together a bit. Um, the $500,000 that we are asking for in the budget for resurfacing, that doesn't include, you know, our routine maintenance, pothole patching, um, adding sod when we do something along a right of way. That's within our streets budget. We, rec we budget about three, uh, about 30,000 for materials, you know, to cover that sod, asphalt. Um, and then the rest of course is in-house streets crews that do the, that type of patchwork. Um, the, the data, the spreadsheet that came with this product is, is really quite voluminous. It contains a multitude of calculations. It is in Excel, so staff, our GIS staff, engineering, and David can, can you know, look through it and adjust it. And we do have, um, David's here with a laptop. If there's a particular road you wanted us to look up or if you have any further questions about the whole program. Thank you. Saul Jason first, go ahead. Thank you, Faith. I appreciate the report. <clears throat> How, um, this is just more of an FYI. Um, I have a lot of people who are very upset about the condition of their roads. Um, I see the list of streets for the current annual budget. I don't want to get into whether or not I personally think that we have roads out there in much worse condition okay. than those that are proposed. I think there are. Um, I think for the commission, I, I've mentioned this, I think we need to strongly consider this year's budget increasing that because in, when the economy's down, you're not getting an increased budget. At some point, you're gonna, we gotta do this, we're gonna get further and further behind. Um, so I would like faith in a future date, I'd like to get with you and go over this. I don't okay. want to belabor this issue with the commission sure. until I can get some specifics, but um, the fair green area has a number of streets that we have gotten requests from the residents of that. Area. I mean, Street. these streets haven't been done in, in 20, 30 years. There's some of these streets are so bad that you can't walk on them without sliding on gravel. So anyway, we'll talk about it. Thank you. Was I think he's referring to Lake. Green like Fairy Green Circle. Right. Could you tell us if he's got the computer? Where yeah. is it on the list? Just for the yeah. information. Like Fair Green Circle. I think she emailed all of us. 
while he's looking that up, Faith, um, question for you. The, so they recommended 1.3 million to bring us up to a level to, and then you said after that 20.3 million over five years. So I guess my question is, if we, if we looked at an average life of a road and did the calculation of how many miles of road we have and the life, and I mean, it seems like there's a calculation here that we could do that would say, this is the funding that we need on a steady state to just make sure we're always, we're not falling further behind, we're not necessarily um, you know, getting way ahead, but this is, this is the right budget amount. Is that the 1.3 million? Is that what keeps us from accruing a deficit of deferred maintenance in our roads or? That like doesn't bring you up to, you know, a hundred, a score of a hundred on PCI, but that keeps you at a level that to keep, because the further the roads deteriorate, then the more expensive it is to maintain them. So I mean, it's I guess trying to, me, there's to a, there's balance a minimum, it out. There's a minimum score that right. it seems like we could say, once roads hit this minimum score, we want to be able to resurface them. And so the here's how much we need to put in a, you know, aside every year, because we know we'll have this many roads hitting that minimum score based on the age of the roads and the deterioration rate. I mean, it's not, it won't be perfect. There'll be right. some art to the science, but. That's where they're talking about the minimum score of like 65 yeah. to try to keep you at, you know, to keep you with a well-balanced <laughs> program that your roads aren't deteriorating So I, I, I guess what I'm driving at is I heard two different numbers here. It feels like the 20.3 million is a rapid catch up to say, that okay, over five years, that gets us back to where every road is almost brand spanking new, I think. Don't, don't let me well, put words in your mouth. Quite but everybody, but yeah. It gets us, gets us way ahead. It is is one point, I guess I'm trying to figure out why 500K, why not six or 700, why not 300? Is it 1.3, like what's, that the, was, what's the real number? That was staff's suggestion based on prior years where we've had just, uh, we've had much lower amounts, so we we didn't ask for the sky. We asked for you know double what we had this year. Yeah. So to see how you know what with all the other priorities within the commission budget, and that's that's where we. Yeah, I mean I get it. Down, we may not so. we may not we may not be able to get there this year. Right. But I just would like to know, I'd like for us to know, if we only fund it to 500k we're falling behind. We're, we're accruing a deficit of deferred maintenance. We have a liability building up on our sheets that we're eventually gonna have to address right. via some magic funding source. When we first went with IMS, we asked them to give us a five-year plan. I mean, you can go back in and you know put any kind of funding level you want and see how far it <coughs> takes you out. Yeah. We, can, we can do those okay. formulas and look at those if you'd like us to. Yeah, I'd like, maybe at some time, and this isn't okay. urgent because again, this year I don't think we'll be able to get you know, we'll see how far we get, but we won't get to anywhere near where we need to probably, but maybe with time I can sit down with you and, and play okay. with that and explain what I'm trying to drive at here. And we can have them, you know, come in or be on a teleconference yeah. and help us too, so. I, I personally though really like that we have, we have this data because we all get those, we all get those comments from folks that say, hey, my street's, my street's the worst one in the city. And I mean, outside of going out and doing the, the, the windshield surveys, you called it, and, and again, I'm not a road expert. So I like that we have this to point to and say, well, you know, here's where yours is on the list and it will be three years out. And I mean, you know, the citizens may not always love that answer, um, but it, it's, there's something to back it up. There, there's something to say, well, here's the list of streets going beforehand and here's why based on, you know, some, something scientific, so. And just, I'm sorry to ask her, answer Commissioner sure. McGurk's Lake Fairgreen Circle. It has a PCI of 54, so it's beyond the six year time frame at 500,000 a year. It's not within those first six years. The, uh, Mayor, what you just said, it's, it's, it's excellent. The problem is what happened if, if we say even we have a consistent number of dollars to use every year, well, that number of dollars might not give you the same amount of mileage today as tomorrow. Yeah. So when you tell someone well, it's going to be three years and then three years comes and it's like it's going to be five years. And that's where the problem is. It's, it just creates a, a big problem for us because we have not followed. We used to put 500 and then the minute that they have to cut the budget for something, they go so to the first to go, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the 1.23 million, my understanding from the study is the 1.2 million a year would actually bring you in six years, bring you back to almost to the 
to the surface. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're going to be above, but it bring you at least from that point on, it would be a lot easier for you to, to catch up. And I think the point you made too, I mean, that we're over, our average is 70. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll yeah. take our problems. There's probably communities that that average is much lower. So I mean, I think we're doing overall a good job. Your, your point's well made. One budget strategy I'd like to see us pursue is hard, hard budget dollars um, they, they tend to be subjected to what you're just talking about. They, they get eroded with inflation and other things. I would like to see us have more things that are tied to percent of revenue or number of street miles or things like that because that, that adjusts dynamically based on current operating environment. So it makes your budget a much more dynamic budget that is realistic as things change. Um, and then we can also, uh, as we add street miles of pavement, we know we have to build the budget up to expand the number of street miles that we have in our budget to pave. We have to incrementally adjust that over time. So it's just a, it's a much more complex budget me methodology, uh, but I, I think we should be moving towards that, so. And I would even go further. Instead of having the, the mileage, I would just have the list, and we could say that we, this list will be done this year. So this way we know, no matter what, that this list of streets, it will be done. So, for example, if you come in in two years and you say, I have this list, and this list is going to be 750000 that's what we should budget for. Yeah. And that's all great until the economy tanks. <laughs> and then we, then we adjust on the fly. Yes, sir. I think you, uh, you discounted your windshield surveys. They're often as important, if not more important, right. than the, these factually based ones. I've done them both ways. The, uh, and I read through their methodology very, very carefully. And in my mind, we should concentrate more on the, the pure numbers as they are, and the lesser ones should get more attention. But to arbitrarily pick a number that we feel is proper, as I know you would like to do, Mr. Mayor, to set a goal and work towards it, that's an arbitrary number they've come up with. I've, I've traveled these streets and I've looked at their conditions, compared it to their report, and it varies widely, the strength of the street, the type of traffic and everything with it. So we can't use it as an exact guideline to set a priority number that it, that it goes. And you got to remember, these are only dealing with the physical characteristics of the street itself. There's no uh, social uh, portion of that that this takes into account, which is where your windshield surveys yeah. are so important and where you have to pay attention to as Mr. McGurk said, and someone came up to me with the same street. And I find that it is uh, probably in better shape than some of the ones in my neighborhood that my neighbors always tell me they have to be fixed, but I just can't see it happening. So we got to keep that in mind and try to uh, come up with a, an amount of money we want to spend every year. The 250000 for this year is a pathetic amount. I would like to see that increased even this year, and the number for next year uh, is a good number to look at. We can look at that in the budget. But we just can't always reduce these to a pure number. I've tried it in other communities, yeah. and I've also tried coming up with a list of streets, and when your budget runs out and you're half a street short, you will hear about that forever. <laughs> so I don't like doing that. So getting a priority, saying how we would like to look at it, go ahead with that. But we really got to be careful for setting a, a, a quality of road higher than we actually think we need based upon what they say. Because you can also see they said our roads are in better shape than most other people's. So it's, it's something we really can't tie down too tightly. I completely agree, and as I said, I think there's an element of, of art that goes with the science. Yes. Um, but this uh, allows us, you know, government by squeaky will is an ineffective government as well. So this allows us to have something to fall back on to avoid to avoid that um, that trap that is so easy to fall into. 
if, if you want my projection as to how that's going to work out, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine, and I think we should follow it, but we're never going to catch up. <laughs> but we want to keep it reasonable in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mayor, sure. a question. Um, piggybacking off of the conversation I'm hearing, uh, I usually use Saxon as an example since I live so close to it. And the county uh, jointly resurfaced that road, I believe, less than five years ago. And the change in the traffic patterns to see more trucks, more heavy vehicles, increased volume, since we're behind the eight ball, not terribly, but we're still always going to be behind the eight ball, it, do we ever consider or does the engineer uh, consultant consider an enhancement to a road to to um, you, you mean a different type of uh, treatment instead of res or full more, resurfacing or more uh, because of the heavy load of the trucks it seems right after they resurfaced potholes <laughs> cropped up uh, edging uh, the edge of the pavement uh, cracked away so it it's really a, a, a touchy thing are we just going to be able to <laughs> Of course, Saxon is basics. county, right. you know, so that's on their list, but... Yeah, but, um, um, yeah. but the thing is they used, it's called micro-resurfacing. Yes. And it's, it's, you know, we don't, we don't use it at all because right. you could see what happened in Saxon. Yes. It doesn't even last uh, months. Uh, yes. We tried it one time. Uh, this was back about 15 years ago and, and no more after that. So it, would it doesn't give you the, 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 uh, the, the structural uh, index is as much as the, uh, the typical asphalt that you use. It's a lot cheaper, but it's, it doesn't really give you the benefit. It's, it's, I agree completely with your analysis. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. You know, it looks good for a very short period of time, but it doesn't really help you out with your strength ratings. And by the way, the aspect you talk about, the additional traffic loads, are not figured into this report. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks, Faith. Any other questions, comments? No, just one of the points that IMS brought up when they did their presentation was is that you have some streets that are in such bad shape, you're going to spend twice as much money per foot to repair them. You'd be better off to take the middle streets and get them fixed and up to par. You could do a lot more with the same amount of money. And then if and when you had a budget, you know, surplus or something where you could do a major repair or major road improvement that would be the time to do the, the worst of the streets <coughs> they didn't even recommend doing your worst streets first they said they tried to do the best bang for your buck get as many miles as possible or feet as possible you know given the budget that we did so uh, that's why some of the roads I think are worse and not on the first of the list but you know because they were just going to take so much money to bring them up just up the yeah. par that you know it was a decision on our part whether we wanted to spend that all of our money on one or two roads. So. And I think those are all great examples of, again, where, to, to Commissioner Clody's point, where the, the, the expertise of staff has to be applied to this. Yes. You know, grouping roads in a, in a same area to, to get economies of scale when you mobilize, um, you know, things like that. Looking at the type of surface we're reapplying, if, if we're applying for, you know, a surface type that was meant for one traffic load and now it's a completely different one and we would be better off going to you know, a different type or a, you know, denser type or concrete or something else. I mean, those are all things that, yeah, this cannot tell us that. We have to have expertise, uh, experts in the field, expertise in the field that, that can bring that back to us, so. Well, that's why we re rely on engineering to help yeah. us with all that, yeah. too. Yeah. So. Uh, one thing, Mr. Mayor, yep. is if we were putting this out to bid ourselves, we would certainly group the roads together and tie them together because of the cost of moving equipment. Yep. If we're just tacking on to a per ton contract for someone else it really doesn't matter we we are we are recommending piggybacking off volusia county's resurfacing contract. oh i agree for for the, the total bid cost right. that's correct it just doesn't matter if we lump our particular streets right. together okay Thing, we're good thank you thank you, thank you. Are you, you ready to go through all that again at 6 30 right, right. <laughs> We're going to ask you all the same questions. <laughs> no, seriously, hopefully we don't have to go through that again with her. <laughs> Save us all some time. Okay, moving along, we just have two topics remaining on our discussion tonight. Um, 
Next is transportation impact fees, kind of turning back to the revenue side. Um, unfortunately, transportation impact fees cannot be used for resurfacing. I know that's frustrating for residents and commissioners, but these are capacity-related improvements tied to new development. Um, so where we left off at our last workshop is we had a presentation. Um, we looked at two methods. One was called the consumption-based or more conventional, and we had the what's called incremental expansion. Um, at the commission's direction, we we were going back to the conventional consumption-based approach. Um, Want to kind of wait and see how the sales tax ended up and then come back and revisit it. That's where we're at right now. Um, through our analysis of that consumption-based approach, um, and Commissioner Colodi um, identified this in, in his analysis, um, there was one factor there that was kind of throwing the numbers way off, and it's called the local adjustment factor. I won't bore you with, with the details and how that's derived, but Basically, um, it's the amount of traffic that's going on our major city streets from new development, and that was underestimated in the study. However, we can't just manually make it higher. <laughs> We'd love to do that, but we, but we can fairly easily go out and collect some counts on some major and so-called sub-major city streets to get that number higher to where it's, it's appropriate, it's legally defensible, and then that will come back with a study, which we expect to have in front of you in June. Um, I don't have the new rates yet. I would expect them to be moderately higher to cover the cost of um, construction increases um, as well as the, the, the um, need for additional capacity improvements. Um, so unless there's further direction on that, we'd like to bring that back to you in June. New rates could be ready in August, and then they would be implemented. You have to wait 90 days, so plus or minus the start of the fiscal year. So. Um, any questions on the status of the impact fee study where we're at in that? I have comments. Uh, I had promised that I would come up with a list of roads that could be added to our road network. And I can't tell you the number of hours that I spent looking at the maps and trying to find enough roads where we could change our base number higher. Uh, we could certainly improve it, but not to the point where we could equal the rates we have now. So I think we really have to look at that, uh, the, the local road factor. Now, I know it was recommended at like six, I believe. That was the data collected number, and yes. I think we just didn't collect enough data on, on streets. So that's really all that we need to do is keep the rest of the study as is if we adjust that number, because the costs are higher in construction. Yes. So that, that will kick up the rates if, if right. we correct that one. And data point. if I remember correctly, <coughs> we were following, or we should follow the same method yes. we have in our existing ordinance. That number was considerably higher yeah. the yes. first time around. Yeah. Whether it was based upon facts or based upon whatever, it survived for a number of years without challenge. So I can't see how, if we lower that number somewhat, how we can be really left out totally hanging by our nails on some type of justification. Mm -hmm. So I just think we have to look upon that adjustment number uh, carefully. That's where we're at. Um, OK, our last topic on our scheduled agenda is the River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization. And just to kind of back up a little bit about what a TPO is, it's quite simply, it's, it's a planning and funding allocation agency um, that most transportation dollars nationwide on state and federal roadway systems come through the federal government. There are other sources. And that money is routed through state DOTs who assign funds as determined by local MPOs, and, and we're one of them. It's a tri, um, there's, they're usually grouped in by counties. So that's a very simplified way of the way things get funded. These are, again, state road improvements, interstates, um, and things like that. So we have, um, it's a very important function for us. Um, just to go to the next slide is very important we maximize what we can get out of the TPO. Um, Really pleased to announce, if everybody doesn't know, that Commissioner McGurk was recently named the incoming vice, vice chair, first vice chairperson of the MPO. Uh, that was as of May 22nd, so congratulations. Um, 
this list are other members of the committees and who, who represents us. The uh, Citizens Advisory Committee and Transportation Improvement Program member is Ms. Nora Jane Gillespie. She's here today. We appreciate her volunteer hours um, serving on these committees for us, um, as well as the Bike Ped Advisory Committee, uh, Mr. Nick Mostert. I don't know if he's here, Nick's here or not, but we also thank him. Uh, and then Amy King is our staff representative, our planning director on the Technical Coordinating Committee. Um, what I would suggest is, um, given that we have a lot of new people and a lot of new initiatives, is that staff, we organize a meeting with these representatives key staff people, the city manager, and I think we need to get together and coordinate our, just what our roles are at the MPO, um, led by staff, on how we can maximize um, you know, what we get out of it and have the same priorities going in, understanding what relationships are important and that we meet periodically, and then as staff, we report back to the commission as a whole um, with where we're at on transportation planning. So, so I, I just have to say, I, I hope everyone recognizes. And Commissioner McGurk, how long have you been on TPO now? It's been a, been a bit, right? Yep, it's been about seven years. Seven, seven years. Um, Actually, and it, yeah, and I was on, I represented the Citizens Advisory Committee, chaired that back around 2006 as a county appointment. Also, BPAC, same time. Yeah. <laughs> being elected the first vice chair I'll be chairman of the TPO on the next cycle which will be next May so the importance of that to New Smyrna Beach I mean it, it doesn't change the it doesn't change the weighting of our vote I don't you don't get an extra vote or anything do you no I wish we did I just, <laughs> just to make that clear New Smyrna's vote is 4.2 percent so it's not which a whole a, lot. Which is a population population derivative. But uh, the importance of that can't be understated. And I, and I hope that we as a commission can, um, it, you noted that hers is a volunteer position. I, I told McGarry, his, his is also pretty much a volunteer position. Yeah. He doesn't get paid extra to, to, to represent us there. Uh, but we, we appreciate it. Um, he and I don't necessarily always agree on everything, but I, I do appreciate that you're there, you're representing New Smyrna and able to um, help us with projects and the connections that he's able to form there, um, you know, the, the Turnbull Bay Bridge and how that all came together, you know, those are those are the kind of connections that having him represent us there uh, can, can play such a huge part and able to get these things done. Because we've all seen the dollars and cents that are associated with all, with all of this. So we're, we're definitely going to need funding coming from more than just the New Smyrna Beach taxpayers solely. So. Um, thank you for, for doing that. Thank you for representing us, and uh, you all are doing a great job, and to Ms. Gillespie as well, of course. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So, Mr. Mayor, just to wrap up the discussion on that, um, a TPO, and in my experience, I represented a, a different city at the Orlando Metro TPO for 12 years. Um, it sounds simple, but showing up is really, really important. Have all the representatives be at all the meetings, at all the subcommittee meetings, uh, have a seat at the table, have a, I, you know, I, I call it just um, a, whole, a set of projects that we're willing and ready to move forward at any time, any type of project, whether it's bike ped, intersection safety, road capacity, um, have projects in all of the available categories that we can put on lists and, and get moving, and then collectively, um, you know, push them forward the best we can. And I must, let me make a brief comment on that. I want to compliment staff. Staff has done a wonderful job over the years making sure that when the TPO has their annual call for projects that we're submitting, you know, whether it's grant projects, whether it's TPO call for projects, our staff has done a wonderful job at maximizing what, it, what, it, what we can do out there in the community. There's a number of cities that really don't, so I just wanted to give kudos to our staff uh, about the job they have done. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of that meeting, by the way. I don't know, no issues with, with that. Um, if we, we can do it as a commission meeting, if more than one attends, so it's, um, you like the, I'm sorry, you like the idea of having yeah, a meeting. Okay, I thought you yeah, wanted the, to be at the meeting. No, 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 I, the, the, the idea of the, the meeting and making sure okay. that, because that common messaging is important, you know, that when, you know, Nick is at the, the, the BPAC, that he's got the same messaging that, 
you know, our, our first vice chairperson has it at the TPO. So I think getting on that same page, having a unified front between staff and the commission. And, and, and I know that Commissioner McGurk will make sure he's representing the commission as a whole. So, yeah. Okay, and then last item, not on the agenda, just want to give a quick update on the Flagler Avenue parking study. It's transportation related. Um, that um, is in, in process. Um, we completed the data collection part of it um, two weekends ago, not the Memorial Day weekend. Um, we collected data from noon to nine on a Friday and Saturday um, at all the zones similar to the previous study, and we're analyzing that data. Um, we should be able to bring that back in a draft in June. Um, we may, based on those results, want to go back and collect another set of data in more like a typical July weekend at summer. Um, but just want to let you know that we are working on that. Uh, I know there's been some concerns about some traffic on Flagler as well, that um, something we could work into that, at least that discussion, it's not part of that particular study, it's just parking. Um, but looking at things like the, you know, the one-way beach access, closing it at some point, things like that. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Going along with that, uh, I was going to bring up something else that's, that's very important and does tie into the Flagler study. And it's something that you actually mentioned very early on. We need a truly functioning message system for people who are coming into our town, whether they have boat trailers, whether they're going to the beach. Beaches have been closed this weekend because of traffic, they've been full of cars, the boat ramp parking is overflowing, it filled the AOB site and it filled the adjoining neighborhood streets, uh, Quayasissi, commercial parking areas there. Residential streets adjacent to Flagler were packed <coughs> with cars. Now, I spoke with the chief about it, he said, we actually handled it pretty well. We were lucky with the tides. But there has to be a way, and the county must be an integral part in this with the beach accesses to give notification when our parking lots are getting full, when our beach, uh, our boat parking areas are getting full, just to direct them elsewhere and not get them down at the Flagler ramp with no place to go. Yeah. We really got to put some time and money into that and i'm anxious to see the flagler study because that's really where we have to take off from and i i, th I think I, I know we have various things i mean there's the the facebook accounts and the twitter accounts and that you know there's there's those things that if people follow it um but i i don't personally believe that's um you know in, in your face enough i don't think m enough people follow it um, and so I would love to see us looking at, you know, digital, digital billboards, digital signage type things. Um, maybe it's the good old fashioned, you know, the, 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 the flashing yellow things that they drag out, um, that, like they did last year, I think it was, where they would park it up by 95 and, you know, start flashing when the, when the beach ramps were full. Um, I would like to see us be looking at, at, at more of those options. So we're giving people a heads up further, further out. And, and routing them to where there is capacity. Uh, I mean, it's, weekends like Memorial Day, we're just gonna be over capacity. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. Disney was over capacity. They handle crowds better than any other single organization on this planet. And on Memorial Day, you can't move around Disney. So I mean, it just is what it is. But for the rest of the time, every other weekend, I think we could, we could certainly do a better job of that. We need some type of automated system that doesn't rely on the police to go out and push a button after they get a phone call, that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I had asked when I, when I met with our uh, county representative with this new uh, uh, smart traffic signal system out on uh, 44, answer was, oh, there's absolutely no way we can connect them with that at all, which would seem to me to be important. Doesn't he want to consider it? So we're going to have to work on that cooperation with the county on this. You know, talking about electronic signs, we even went as far as discussing with DOT, there's an electronic sign on I-4 mm -hmm. and, and 44, mm -hmm. and directing traffic saying, you know, beach closed or, or full. So this way they could just continue on I-4 going east. Uh, you know, they have tried it a couple of times. I don't know if they keep trying it all the time or not. 
And, and the basic problem is, it's not our residents, it's our visitors. We don't want to discourage them, but we're overloading our, our facilities. We're even doing a little bit of a disservice to those visitors that has to let them come all the way down to the beach and have no place to go. Yeah. It's, it's wrong. It's just simply wrong, and it's other agencies that help, that help us out on this. Mr. Mayor, I, I have a need to editorialize here. Uh, ha after having read the paper about the halfpenny tax and the results on that, and they had a summation of the roads that were heavily impacted, and I was surprised to find out that they actually acknowledged South Atlantic was heavily impacted. That's a kind of a duh moment uh, over this past holiday. And I, I just wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, to piggyback off of um, Commissioner Colodi's statement, the impact to our city is from visitation. It, it is not our residents who are causing the problem. and and. I know that our county councilwoman, she is, uh, you know, she does consider that, but at the same time, the, the traffic just keeps increasing. The, the beach, uh, at the beach is getting more packed. And now they're considering, uh, you guys probably know, 16th Avenue as a 10 spot parking lot with a handicap walkover. I, I think the handicap walkover is much needed. and. I was debating whether or not to either go listen to that item on the county's agenda on the 4th or even speak to it uh, because I, I feel I've always uh, regretted the fact that we're becoming the beach's parking lot, the county's parking lot for the beach. <laughs> and, and so can I get any feedback from anybody who, because they're offering us three options, a very small parking lot which is gonna heavily impact the neighborhood on Hill Street at 16th, or just a walkover. Does anybody have any thoughts that they'd like to share that maybe I could share with the county council? Because with the heavy impacts on Atlantic already, they want more parking lots. Uh, yes, my understanding is those 10 park installs, they've estimated will cost $460,000. That money could be spent better elsewhere. Just. So in my mind. So do my colleagues mind if I So hey, let's let, let's let the other ones chime in here. Yeah, okay, any, sure. Any comments on that? Good. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're parking there now without yes. any improvements. So I, I don't I agree with Commissioner Colodi. I don't know why you want to spend the money to improve the parking lot when they're already parking there anyway. Uh, so I would assume that they've completely axed the idea of making that a ramp which it was intended for to begin with. We hope. Relieve the, which would relieve some of the traffic on Flagler and 3rd, but I guess they don't want to go that route, so. Uh, my, my concern is the, the deterioration of the dune system, that tiny little easement that they have, they, they want to maximize for parking, and it's just to be kind spitting in the ocean and causing a major headache on an already overcrowded and dangerous corridor do uh, my thoughts are please just make it a handicap ramp in fact I asked them if it's a handicap ramp why only provide one handicap spot maybe that's their rule but I would say <laughs> provide five handicap spots it's going to be a, a it might make the newspaper when this comes to pass and, and I hope they can do it in a sensible way yeah. so my I don't know how this has been done with previous commissions, but my, my suggestion would be when it comes to, as we, as we talk to our, our county representative and representatives or speak to the county as a whole, um, that we, you know, I think as the representative of the zone that, you know, that is impacted by that, I certainly think you could speak uh, in, in that capacity. Um, and then if other commissioners have, you know, thoughts or opinions that they want to share with the county representative, uh, I know Commissioner Colody met with her the other day, um, I think we can share those individually. I think some of us may feel passionately enough to share something on this. If you want to, you know, be at the meeting and speak, certainly that's your, your right as a, of course, a citizen of the county. And I think you'd speak in your capacity as the representative of that zone yeah. and what you think is right for that. Um, I, I think as far as trying to bring a message from the entire commission, that, that can get rather nuanced, I think, and yeah. if it's not a just real, real black and white issue. So I would, that would be my suggestion on items like this. So I, I, I'm... Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. That's good advice. And I would made, mostly be speaking as a resident yeah. and with concerns for my fellow residents. 
and just, of course, they'll know <laughs> that I'm a city commissioner, but uh, try to keep it as, uh, as kind as possible. Well, for sure, because, you know, just like we all, you know, the, the county commissioners are there. They're, they're trying to do what, what is right. You know, they're listening to feedback. They're, they're considering all the factors they can, and, and they're trying to make the right decisions and represent us well, represent, um, you know, the, their constituents well. So I think keeping it, you know, professional and all those things, of course, you would do. So, um, you know, that, that's, we all know what it feels like to, to you know, <laughs> stand there and be, 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 uh, be talked to a certain way. So um, I think as long as we do that, I think there's, there's no problem with that. So thank you all for the input. Any other comments on this item? I had um, just one other thought kind of uh, when it comes to transportation, and I talked with uh, Khaled about this just briefly before the meeting. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that with time that we can take some of these issues and, um, you know, so we're, we're, we're doing a parking study, um, we're addressing, we've got some, some various part, uh, traffic things, but, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can have a, a cohesive look at here are you know, here's the issue that we're trying to solve, and here's the, you know, proposal A, B, and C that we think will solve that issue. So, you know, when it comes to parking, I hope we don't stop at just getting the data. And I hope we we're able to say, and here's option A, B, C. You know, we have a peak capacity problem, and here's three options that could help solve uh, that could help solve that. And here's the related costs. Here's some potential funding sources, uh, etc. So, um, it's easy to throw throw things out and we have in some ways the easiest job staff has the hard job um, you know we talk about digital signage it's easy to just throw that out as an idea um, but I hope we're able to distill some of these things down to either they're feasible or they're not and then if they are here's three ways we can achieve that and let's you know debate the policy of which way we want to uh, we want to pick so I think we're headed in all the right directions I think we've got all the right people working on it so I'm very excited to see what what comes out of the next few uh, months any other comments on this meeting? Any other business? Brian, you good? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to all the staff that are here. Great job in, in preparing this. So, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>